Hi guys, I'm Shmi and today I must be in pretty much the most remote location I have ever stopped to make a video. But today I'm going to be driving the Mercedes AMG SLC 43. Now I'm going to show you around the car, talk a lot about it and then take it for a short test drive on a rather nice road that surrounds me here. But before we do so, let's talk a little bit about these new 43 engines and how they fit into the AMG lineup. So at the very top you have the other car that I've driven during this trip, the AMG GT Roadster. That's AMG's sort of top in-house developed car. Below that you then have the 63 range, their sort of traditional AMG sports cars. And now you have the new 43s, which open up the brand and the sporty characteristics to a new audience. Now I'm just going to quickly say that don't let the looks of this weather deceive you. It is actually very, very, very cold and windy here right now but it looks so nice that I had to stop to take some pictures right here and get us started. So let's talk about this car. Let's start off with the engine. It's a three litre bi-turbo V6, 367 horsepower, 510 newton meters. Obviously the engine is up front. It's a two seater roadster, it's rear wheel drive. Many of the 43 engine cars can be had in formatic versions but this is just two wheels at the rear. Hard top convertible currently folded away into the rear. And the SLC is basically the facelift of what was the SLK. So it's a kind of relevant car to me because if you've been following my channel for an awfully long time, you might remember that my mother drives an SLK 350, which is effectively, I guess, the predecessor to this, the uh, V6 engined version of the two seater. Now it's just got very, very windy on me. So please excuse me for that. I wish I had um, an additional mic microphone right now so that I could film slightly better but this is quite a location to stop and check out the car. So it's looking very nice in this dark blue. With the AMG package you get the sport grille at the front with those sort of highlights all the way through it but the one sort of central uh, bar across either side of the Mercedes badge and the AMG logo just over to the side. You get a new look to the front sort of apron, the lower area, new wheels of course and if we come around to the back you've got the lip spoiler across the top of the boot lid there's an antenna right in the center and then the uh, twin exhaust on each side a slightly different diffuser shape hey i'm not alone there's another car <laughs> if we come and have a quick glance at the interior you can see we've got carbon fiber trim in here the tan or sorry dark sort of brownish color leather um, against the blue looking quite nice harman kardon speakers um, generally quite nicely set up i mean the uh, old slk of course was and this uh is no less too, but let's just step in, hide behind the windshield for a minute, um, where we can be a little bit out of that wind, which is quite nice. Fire up the car with the engine start stop button here. V6 comes to life. And then let's just hear it for a moment, pull the door closed. You've got the dynamic selector here to put it into your different drive modes. So we can go into Sport Plus, you can hear the uh, valves opening, the rev slightly rising. You get that raspy kind of V6 noise, restricted from revving too high at a standstill, but obviously when driving up to about six and a half thousand RPM. And we'll discover more of that in a second. So that's a quick introduction to the car on the inside. I like that. The IWC uh, watch clock in the center on the dashboard. But I think we shall take it for a little drive. Now, before we get on the road initially, I'm gonna pop the roof back up, which you do by opening this console. Uh, press and hold the button forwards. It opens up the boot to the back, and then the uh, panels come up over our head. So it's a slightly slow process, not the quickest in the world to have that folding hardtop, but obviously when you've got the hardtop in place, you have slightly more by way of driving dynamics um, and rigidity to the car by having the roof, and then you have a separate control to do all four windows, including the rear. So, with the car fully closed up, let's pull it into drive with the selector. We're still in Sport Plus at the moment, so I'm going to put it back into the standard mode, which is comfort. Um, I'll show you those as well when we get back. You've got individuals, so you can configure it. Eco, Comfort, Sport, and Sport Plus. Um, those configure the gearbox, the steering feel, and the ESP settings in this car. So, not a huge amount. Now, let's get off this dirt and onto the tarmac. Well, we've got a road that's very nice in terms of twists and turns, but it's quite rough and uh, bumpy, so giving the car a little bit of a, a, a test, I suppose. But it's quiet, it's comfortable. It's got the nine-speed um, gearbox, so automatic gearbox. Um, nine-speed basically means 
it's forever probably going up and down, but you don't feel any of it. Um, some performance stats, 0 to 62 miles an hour, 100 kilometers an hour is 4.7 seconds. Top speed is limited to 250 kilometers an hour, 155 miles per hour, as you probably expect it to be honest. But driving it like this, comfort mode, it's relaxed, it's gentle, similar kind of, I guess, feedback as when I drove the GLC 43 Coupe, which had the same engine in it. So let's turn it up through to well, sport mode initially. Let's drive it automatically in sport, where you can just hear a little bit more engine noise, but not much dramatically without accelerating. One more press, and we've got Sport Plus, where it drops down some gears. You start getting some exhaust crackles. There we go, and a little sort of, I don't know what to call it, burp on upshift. Oh yeah, there we go. And you can press M here to keep it in manual. Seamless shifts, very nice feel to it. It's very clinical, if that makes sense. It seems to feel like it all comes together very nicely. There we go, so, roof back. Oh yes. This is again in that power band where you can use it, you can accelerate, you can get up to the red line without feeling like you're committing some atrocious crime. The ride is firm, undoubtedly, but then this is a very hard road. I can feel there's a little bit more shake to the car already with the roof down. It's quite interesting how immediate that is. Always going to be a problem with keeping a car like this rigid. Oh yes. Yeah, I don't know how much of the crackles you actually hear through the uh, through the microphone. So let's think about things that I guess are not necessarily so positive. Firstly, brand image. SLK, now SLC, is it a bit of a hairdresser's car? Um, to drive, it doesn't feel like it. It's the same as sort of a Boxster. It feels now like these cars have got to proper standard, especially an AMG trim. Um, you know, you're looking at carbon, you're holding a nice steering wheel. Um, the car looks aggressive with the body kit on the outside. Um, yes, maybe it's not fast enough. Um, when you think about the price you're paying, 367 horsepower isn't a huge number for the amount of money, but it's fun has some sporty character to it and that, you know that's the whole point of this AMG line to open up at a different price point you have the 43s under the 63s in some cases you know the C-Class for example the E-Class this car being the SLC is obviously renamed to give that SLC des uh, designation to make the point that it's part of the sort of C-Class line so the engine is the same configuration as let's say the C43 uh, Cabriolet um, in terms of power and torque Obviously, performance figures vary slightly depending on weight and size and uh, formatic or just rear wheel drive. But it's comfortable, it's very comfortable, it's pretty practical. The screen is a little bit small, maybe you want a slightly bigger screen on it. And it would be nicer to have a better like selector for the drive modes. I find this button right next to the air scarf a little bit odd. It kind of feels like it's not naturally positioned there. Um, you've got lots of seat movement, lumbar support. Um, a good sound system. Um, the buttons around the centre for the media and audio are a little bit plasticky, um, but that's sort of a minor thing relative to the rest of the car. Um, and I think the 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 uh, deflector behind you is fixed permanently, which does mean obviously that you get a slightly sort of hazy view to the rear when you're looking backwards. But without it, it would be rather windy back there. So it's better to have it for sure. Oh yes, first gear. Oops, might have got off the limiter there. However, it did sound very, very nice. So I'm gonna swing around, have one last little drive back in the other direction. <laughs> That's perhaps a slight thing. It's very easy to run into the red rev limiter. You get up to the top very quickly, and then uh, obviously you have to shift because in auto you have to get the shift just a little bit ahead of time to make sure up you go. But yeah, this is, a, this is a good fun day, that's for sure. Right, let me find somewhere to pull up and show you a little bit more things like the trunk boot, I should say. Obviously, I am English after all, and in the front. I'm back at base, and I'm gonna show you a little bit more about this car, but firstly, there's a C43 AMG behind me. That's the car with the same engine and the same configuration as this. Then on that side, 
we've got the E43 AMG, which has a slightly more powerful version of the same unit. But in here, let's talk about a couple of the sort of visual things. So the AMG performance dials, special to the 43 versions, of course. You've got the speedometer over to the left side and the rev counter over the right. In the center, you can see I've got the AMG mode open. So you've got your temperatures, you've got your lap timer, you've got your uh, dynamic select options, depending how you have it configured. Um, and it goes back round. You can cycle through, so that was the AMG mode. You've got your trips, your navigation, your audio, your telephone, and the usual kind of things. Here in your driver systems, you can turn on and off the various different settings you can see in front of us. Um, there's quite a lot on here, because there's four. And then you've got your service details and a few more settings and things. But the AMG uh, mode is quite nice. That was all controlled through the left side of the steering wheel here. Looking around just to the left, You've got your seat configuration options just in there. Um, there's additional uh, lumbar support control down here. If I just open that up, actually, you can see the lumbar support dial down there um, above the Armand Kardon speaker grill. Um, you've got your cruise control stalk down here, uh, pull towards you uh, to set, push away to cancel up and down, obviously, to do the speed. And then uh, above that, lights and wipers both on the left hand side stalk the right, audio controls, phone controls, this is the AMG uh, steering wheel, sports steering wheel option, um, then we've got all the different buttons I've been talking about, so the air scarf control uh, next to the heated seat, um, obviously for the air behind you, the way this is all, this is all quite neat and not necessarily over clustered down at the base, um, then you've got those controls for doing the roof mechanism, um, or for independently doing all four windows, should you so wish as well. Um, with that, and behind that, just a nice uh, storage box as well, um, with enough space for gear and the like. So, let me uh, turn this off for the moment and hop on out. Let's open the bonnet, lever down here, give that a pull. So come round. Easy to find. This colour in the sunshine is very nice. Oh, the red stripe as well, that's quite cool. So that's the new 43 unit, not much to see beneath the large cover over the top, but three litres of bi-turbo V6, 367 horsepower, 510 newton metres. Drop this back down. There we go. The colour is lovely. Gorgeous. Come round to the boot as well. Open this up you'll be able to see the roof in here. So when the roof is in place, it sits like that. You have some sort of access. You can see I've got a suitcase in here uh, and a, a laptop bag. Hopefully you can just about see inside. So you've got some storage space. If the roof is up on the car, you can move this tray and tuck it back. So let me demonstrate that actually. Um, I think I've probably shown you this earlier in the video, but you can do the roof mechanism from the key. So a triple press and hold on the third press. We'll start the mechanism doing its thing. Watch all of this happening. It's quite cool watching this. Some kind of transformer thing happening. And then finally the windows. There we go, all done. We'll unlock it again. You can open the boot either with the button or you can hold it on there. Then when you open this up, you can put this tray back in there and have quite a large boot actually, so it's kind of um, lots of space or whatever you need. The one other thing I want to show you is the roof. It's got the uh, glass roof option. So if I jump in here quickly, I don't know if I need to start it up to demonstrate this, but I will. So it has this roof, the translucent roof, uh, that you can control and make brighter or uh, darker, depending what you want. That's done with this button here at the front of the window. So there we go. Open. Now it's a sunroof. Now you're not going to get burnt. Well, not burnt, but overheated, shall we say. Um, so that's quite neat. Right, for the minute, let's turn this back off. And start wrapping this one up. It's been an enjoyable drive with the SLC 43 AMG. This particular car looks very nice in the blue paint. And I think overall, it's quite an impressive machine. It drives very well, 
perhaps a little bit more power might be something quite nice to have out of it, just a tiny little bit. Um, but on balance, it's a pretty good machine. So there we go, that's kind of a look, some impressions, not necessarily a full technical over the top review, but just what the car's been like to me to enjoy and drive, showing you around some of the controls and configuration inside as well. So thank you very much for watching guys, hope you've enjoyed the video. Make sure you're subscribed for plenty more and I'll catch up with you again very soon. Cheers.